Welcome to the Vetiver Vibes podcast. We're your hosts, Nikki, Rachel, and Rhonda, certified clinical aromatherapists coming to you from Ontario, Canada, and on the internet everywhere. This episode is brought to you by Accentria, a leading online school for aromatherapy. Accentria is your go-to source for clinical aromatherapy certification programs that are recognized by NAHA and the Canadian Federation of Aromatherapists. If you want to learn more about Aroma Massage Course, check out their website, www.schoolofessentria.com. We're excited that you've given your time to be here with us, knowing you'll get the best essential oil scoop. Welcome to this week's episode of Vetiver Vibes. We are very excited to have Susan Parker with us. Susan is trained as an herbalist and became very interested in infusing plants in oils, but because there wasn't much information on the oils, she began to focus on them with a little help from a friend who is a chemist and was able to clue her in on the fatty acids. This led to a self-published booklet, and after 20 years of running an herbal product business, her book, Power of the Seed, was published. Susan continues her oil research and has become obsessed with looking at the oils by the botanical families as there is so much to discover about them. So welcome to the podcast, Susan. Yeah, that sums it up. (laughs) (laughs) So one thing we like to ask all of our guests as we start off is what would be one of your favorite oils or aromas? Now, most people go to essential oils with this, especially with the aroma. However, since we're going to be talking a lot of carrier oils, lipid oils, you know, I'll I'll leave that up to you as to where you want to go with your answer. Well, funny you should ask. Somebody recently asked me in one of my, one of our Facebook groups. And so my standard answer is like, you want me to choose among my friends, my children? Right. Right. Very much a Sophie's choice to me because it kind of depends on the day or the season or what I well, yes. I, what's going on at the time? Yes. Yeah. So, what would be your go-to right now? Because it is true every day, and I find even morning to evening can change as to what my selection mm-hmm. would be. So, in this moment, what would you say? Well, interestingly, I had remembered um, uh, kind of some of your questions that you know we were we would be talking about, and so this morning, because I always put after I wake up and, and kind of shower and stuff, I put oil on my face because that's all I use anymore. And um, so this morning I grabbed the pineapple seed oil and it literally has a pineapple scent. It's, um, it's, it's a nice one. It's light, very light, maybe too light for it's getting cold here. I like a bit more, uh, saturation or very um, longer fatty acid chains, and we're not going to go down there. <laughs> that gets very complex. Um, or d- not? A, it's funny. It's not even complex. Lipid oil chemistry is nowhere n- near as complex as essential oil chemistry. And I tell my students, well, the the okay, it's made up of fatty acids, right? And which are triglycerides. But the fatty acid, the ends are always the same. And what happens is in between there. And if you just learn all the different permuta- permutations of the different fatty acids, you kind of got it. See, uh, that's the part that scares me all the time though, <laughs> because I'm like, I can, like, it took me so long to even wrap my head around essential oil chemistry, aroma chemistry yeah. that way. And I just like, I remember like, I, I have your book here and I still look at it all the time when I'm looking for the information on it because I'm like I it's not something that sticks in my head chemistry that I have to relearn it like every month I feel when I'm answering questions or looking to do stuff because it just doesn't stick in my head I don't have a chemistry brain apparently <laughs> <laughs> well I've got I've got the fatty acids down pretty good now <laughs> that's good but I mean and this is where it's great to have the reference books because yeah. exactly for people like me, where I know it's not going to stick, I relook at the same information when it comes to chemistry literally every week, and it will not stick. It's, I can remember other stuff, no problem. Chemistry, and this is where like I have my notes. I have databases on my computer. I have books that I'm referencing because it's just not stuff that will stick. And this is why I feel it's so important to have these reference books uh, for you to yeah. sharing your knowledge because you know we need to have that to be able to look up. 
Well, the only way I can begin to remember it and to the point where I can work with it, you know, kind of intuitively is to write it down. Mm -hmm. That's where yeah. all of this came out of. And I thought to grab the original, <laughs> this was a little self-published. This is, that was your little booklet. I was going to say, when did you come out with that? Like 20, 2000 and 20, 20, two, 2002. Okay. Wow. Okay. So it's been 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. 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 Awesome. You've come yeah. a long way in 20 years then. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, when this, the real thing kind of, that was, that was kind of fun and it made me pay more attention and really, you know, ah, you know, cause, oh, was, cause this, I could change and <laughs> yeah do forever you know so no absolutely so um, i'd love for you to share i know we talked a little bit about it in the bio but how did you really get into the carrier oils like was there something beforehand or even what made you want to stay in the carrier oils because they are a huge part of aromatherapy um were you using a lot of aromatherapy before that uh, just kind of if you can expand a little bit on that i, I never did i um i was this is that's 20 years. So at least 35 years ago is when I did my herbal apprenticeship and got into it. It started um, <clears throat> when we started doing the infusing and the tinctures and all of that. And uh, infusing plants and oils was just like, it was so cool, but there wasn't any info. There wasn't much information. I'd have to go to supplier um, content on the internet, you know, like, you know, look at palm oil and it would, some supplier might have some good information. And it yeah. was sort of um, from, you know, catch as catch can, I was making soap. And that's where my chemist friend helped me. Um, what happens when oil becomes soap? And that's, it's still really magical, you know, it, oh, just, it, is. it just switches out the sodium hydroxide for the I don't know I mean I have to go look at my notes to <laughs> show you what happens because I made notes that you know back then and um, so it really was there wasn't enough information so I just started collecting it I, I have this big thick binder of all those supplier notes or um, or if I'd be at the natural food store they'd have a um, omega-3 fatty acids. And so I grab all those little sheets, you know, remember yep. you know, people used to do that more before the yep. internet kind of took over everything. Absolutely. But so all of those, it was just building information so that, you know, I had it in one place. I could go look something up. Mm -hmm. So, and I still use the power of the seed. Like if I want to know, like, you know, how many, how many double chains in that fatty acid? And, you know, it's, I mean, yeah. I, I still use it, although it's kind of, it's, it's old now though. What, when, what year did it come out again? That one. 15. What, this one was 15? 15, 2015. Yeah. So, okay. um, yeah. So I just kept going after that. And, um, you know, we have the, the four courses and a membership. And so every month in the membership, I'm, you know, kind of looking up something new or somebody asked me a question. And so we cover yes. that. So. so what is your membership about? Can you expand on well, that? Well, only lipid oils. Yeah. Um, and it, um, we've done, I've done monographs on individual oils um, for a period of time. I was really interested in the different colors, mm -hmm. red oils, green oils. Where do they come from? What are the compounds? So I got very interested in the the other part. So just a little mini tutorial on uh, lipid oil. <clears throat> they are made up of like 98% uh, uh, lipid fatty acid compounds. And those fatty acids are, are three fatty acids joined by a glycerol molecule. So that's the triglyceride you hear about. And, yeah. and that's, that's the major, um, amount of of all oils i mean some some have a higher of uh, on fatty acids some are a little bit lower but it's all up around 90 90 95 percent or more and that other tiny part is where the um 
the any scent is like my mm -hmm. my uh, pineapple seed oil I used this morning, and uh, but but scent and taste like the difference between cocoa butter and olive oil. Cocoa butter is right. an oil; it's just solid, yeah. and um, and and vitamin E, the tocopherols, and the color and the everything, everything else is in this really small percentage. And people kind of say, oh, well, there's not enough there to do anything. But if you see a really red oil, you're going, yeah, that's not insignificant. You know, no. it would be a small percentage, but it, you can't use it all. You have to dilute it because it's yeah. so red or so something else, you know. Yeah. No, and well, that makes me think of, so, cause you're talking about diluting and a lot of, a lot of people look surprised when we always suggest like, you know, blend your carrier oils, blend your fatty oils. And they're like, we can do that. Yes. They each have their own benefits, <laughs> blend them. And it does. And people are like, Oh, uh, like they, they just seem so surprised. Like it's a, it's a great new concept. Come over into our camp. And <laughs> Right. Yeah, right now, um, this is going to be uh, um, shown much later, but we have a facial oil course where it's about blending oils, you know, for facial oil for benefits. So oh, that'd um, be nice. But, you know, so all these, these, well, and one of the first things I teach, because everybody says carrier, carrier, carrier is only a description. It's not, a, yes. you're using fatty. I, I like that. Or lipid. I I try to I try to alternate, uh, but it's hard because in the aromatherapy world, it is it's just carrier oils is a easier term to use. But it is it's it's lipid oils, it's fatty oils. It's is probably the better term for it then. Yeah, because well, it's like some of these really red oils, like a burriti, bur burriti um, is super red. It wouldn't be a good carrier because you have to blend it, so yeah. it's not you know, carrier is a description, uh, you know, like there, there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. So because most of our audience are aromatherapists or wanting to be aromatherapists or just using essential oils, mostly in general, can you kind of talk a little bit on the importance of using carrier oils lipid oils, fatty oils with essential oils themselves, because this is something that uh, not our not our clinical aromatherapist, not our, our certified aromatherapist, but a lot of people who are sometimes coming into using essential oils who are like, do I really have to use them? And we're always like, yes, yes, yes you do. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Please They're way always too, dilute. They're way too strong. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, you know, 30 years ago, I would play around with putting some lavender on it, like, eh, you know, even lavender, um, which some people like to use neat. And, and back in back in the day, it was kind of accepted for a while, probably not anymore. And eventually you just get sensitized to the volatile compounds. They're, yeah. um, they're wonderful, but they also can be much too much and so what happens what the carrier oil can do is just one diluted and and spread out its um the well of volatility that can be harmful in a concentrated way it makes it 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 it, it, it cuts down on any harm that could happen from um just too much going too deeply into the skin well, and the other thing too is what I like is when you're adding in the fatty acid, the not the fatty acid, the fatty oils, um, you're able to spread the essential oils on a larger amount. Well, yeah. Whereas, and this is where like a lot of people, I remember a few people who used to just add like little drops down their arm of just the essential oil and spread it <laughs> neat that way. And I was like, oh my gosh, please don't do that. And it was like, no, all you need is this way, like one drop in a tablespoon of your fatty oils and then like that'll spread your entire arm so i mean yeah. it makes the essential oils last longer for you to use and it's way safer to apply way them to the body way well the, the fatty oils actually um help the skin because the skin is made up of fats and waxes and phospholipids and this whole I, i've just been doing a lot on on the skin for this course and 
um, if the skin is deficient in certain, because there's two essential fatty acids, right? It's essential nutrients that we all, you need that the body doesn't synthesize. It has to take it in somehow in food. And so there's two essential fatty acids. And um, one of them makes up a large part of the ceramides, which are the, mm -hmm. um, which is the fatty kind of matrix. It's the most outer layer of the skin. And if you're deficient in that fatty acid and you apply oils topically, the skin can take what it needs and, and improve. And um, too many times, if, if, if you're um, deficient in the fatty acid, then you, it can cause uh, eczema and, and some of those skin challenges. Yeah. That, but essential oils are only going to make those worse because it's going to be too much of an irritant in something that's already damaged. I mean, you know, so um, that's something else to keep in mind. So. Yeah. And actually that makes me think there's been, and I've seen it a few times uh, floating around about how using aromatherapy products topically can actually damage the skin long-term. I can and, imagine that, yeah. And I could see, like, if you're not diluting them properly, absolutely. But I, in my head, I'm also saying, well, don't forget that this is where there's a difference in aromatherapy that people aren't looking big picture. Aromatherapy doesn't equal essential oils. Aromatherapy equals essential oils carrier fatty oils hydrosols all of it uh, yeah. and we stress a lot that you don't need essential oils for a lot of things especially when it comes to children when it comes to babies uh, any kind of broken skin anyone with severe compromised health conditions a lot of times just the the fatty oils will do an amazing job and we don't need to add essential oils to it yeah. uh, no, and, that's true. And people always look amazed when we say that too. We're like, you don't need essential oils in every single thing that you do. Like you said, your your morning routine of just the, the pineapple seed oil, which I didn't even know was an oil until right now. It's so a, I, I'm excited it's, to look this oil up. It's, there, it's, it's kind of a brand new one. And I'm always looking. I even have a watercress seed oil lately. And which is, doesn't have, that doesn't have any aroma, but what's interesting about watercress is it's um, part of the cabbage family mm -hmm. and mentioned in the bio, I got, I've gotten, because I trained as an herbalist and I've always gardened, you know, um, my whole life. Um, what's interesting is what I found looking at the fatty oils. If you, when I started to organize them by botanical family, I could see uh, themes within the family of how, the oils are constructed and how, how then you can use them. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's just, that's really fun. It's kind of a puzzle and a pat and I can find patterns and stuff. So that's, that's been kind of what I've been pursuing lately. So that's a really neat way of doing like, and it makes sense. It makes sense that yeah. you can see the yeah. patterns because that's why, you know, they're in the same families because yeah. they have similar things, but just, when you actually take the time to dive deep and to look at them and classify them through that way too, you can start to see those patterns, which yeah. is actually really neat. Well, an, an interesting family um, is a rose family, okay. right? You have all the berries, you know, rose hip and blackberry and strawberry and raspberry. And then you have the trees, you have apple and, and uh, apricot, almond, peach, and, and what happened was when I first, cause I do a lot of pie charts and for my courses mm -hmm. um, and it helps, you know, it's a visual way of just getting a snapshot of something. And so when you start putting the pie charts together, I, there used to be like two distinct fatty acid groups within that family. And all of a sudden it's kind of like, poof, it, now there's four. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and so I keep going, oh, that goes there and that goes here. And, you know, we have these family groups and it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, that's really neat. And it, I, I agree with the pie charts, anything that you can have that's visual just to help remember and to, to see yeah. it is always, always helpful. We do that for our essential oil charts in our course. Oh, we nice. have tables, um, for the, the, the fatty oils to, to show different things that are similar and that type of stuff. Um, but then we have the, uh, a circle pie chart for, for essential oils, but that would be an interesting way of, of doing it too. Yeah. We are trying to spread the word about the safe use of aromatherapy to as many people as possible. 
It only takes five seconds to leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcast or wherever you're listening to us, and it helps us become more visible. We appreciate your support. As this is going to, well, right now, as we're recording this, but even when this is going to air, it's winter time. Uh, well, I mean, we got dumped on with snow. We've had snow for almost a week now. It'll be a week tomorrow. We went from 18 degrees to minus three pretty much in a day. And we're dumped on with snow and we've had snow all week now. Uh, but even when this airs in January, I'm sure there's snow outside. So do you have any recommendations on what kind of oils would be better to use for the winter months? Because that's when a lot of people have dry skin. I know my youngest has horrible dry skin in the oh. winter. Um, and we're, we're always making body butters and whips. yeah bombs and different things for for us because him and I have dry skin but uh, yeah definitely um back to the cabbage family is a good one because of it, the nature of the fatty acid chains they're kind of long mm -hmm. they're I mean they're called very long they're 20 carbons and longer which makes a difference between you know anyway <laughs> but um so abyssinian would be a good oil Meadow foam, it's not actually in the family, but it has very long chains, jojoba. So you have these uh, 20 plus carbon chains that are, are going to be protective. Um, then use those as a base and then add other little oils that you might want to include in that. Um, those are all good ideas. Okay, uh, so the longer the chain for the yeah. winter months will be more nourishing for the skin right now. Yeah, it's just more protective. And and they're 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 unsat they're monounsaturated usually. But uh, another really nice oil that I love is Prakashi P R A X I. Okay. Um, it's a Brazilian oil, and um, it has a wonderful range of these very long chains mm -hmm. and un and monounsaturated and poly and polyunsaturated. It's a nice balance, and you could just use something like that. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah. That's yeah, a nice right. cranberry is a wonderfully balanced oil. Um, mm -hmm. Doesn't have the very long chains, but it's a, it has nice. enough um, oleic acid to be protective and it's a nice one. So Yeah. And now, so coming to winter, to summer months in a few months, would shorter chains then be better for the um, summer more, months? More unsaturated, like grapeseed or raspberry seed. Cause those are just more lighter. I know like I like to use white seeds, yeah. um, especially yeah. in the summer times. Yeah. So uh, just uh, like, um, um, passion flower oh. seed oil. Yeah. That's a nice light one. There's, there's so many. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have it in the membership, we have a database that's, um, Oh, it's over 160 oils, lipid oils at this point. And most people don't have a clue how many there are, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, I, jojoba, you know, what do you want? Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, I like to stick to my, my kind of, I'll say my top 10. Um, <laughs> and I personally can't use nuts because I have a nut, tree nut allergy. So I can't use a lot of the nut oils. So those aren't even in my repertoire of when I'm, when people are, I'm always like, well, apparently these ones are good. I can't say firsthand though. You can't use but, almond. No, I can't use almond. No, which I know is a lot of really great benefits. A lot of people love almond oil for, for different yeah. things. Apricot is said to be um, not as, not as, um, as much of an allergen, it's not as allergen, allergen. like um like almond is and they're so yeah. close they're the fatty acids are very similar the yeah. Mouth, yeah yeah so that would make a you know anyone who does have tree nut allergies like me that would be a great substitute for it yeah um mm -hmm. and we have a lot of people who are massage therapists mm -hmm. who are using or masseuses you know depending on where you are in the world what you call yourself um but who use a base oil and yeah. then some of them are adding in essential oils some of them aren't do you do you have an oil that you would say because the biggest thing is always they don't want to stain their sheets which is where a lot of people usually use a fractionated coconut oil because they don't want their sheets stained um would you say that would still be a good one for that reason or do you think that 
For massage, I, it's okay. I don't like it for skincare, fractionated coconut, because it's it's only a fraction. It's only two, two of the many fatty acids in a coconut or any palm, any of the lauric acid high palms. And uh, so it's, it really, it's, it doesn't have any of those unsaponifiables, those vitamins or minerals or anything like that. Yeah. And it's saturated, which is good for massage, but for skincare, I can't use it. Um, it and then some people are really kind of um, react badly to either coconut, uh, f- fractionated coconut or the MCT oils. Yeah. My daughter gets, uh, she says that she gets this cardboard smell after it's something's been on for a oh, while really? Interesting. yeah and so if she'll buy you know she'll go buy some high-end uh skincare oil and she'll put it on and a half an hour later it smells like cardboard she knows they've used mostly fractionated coconut which is really cheap right so I was gonna say if you're going for high-end you yeah think you it, would it's not it should not be I mean you know I mean marketing yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's where I mean it is one of the most popular oils. You hear about it all the time. I think just because it's it's easy to find and it's easy to grab. Um doesn't go bad. It, that's the thing, right? <laughs> a lot of people are looking for a long shelf life. Yeah. Uh and they don't want to stain. I don't like, as I said, when I give massages, I typically do grab the fractionated coconut oil because I don't want to stain my sheets. I've ruined too many sheets due to stains and I just can't wash them out uh even if I wash them right away afterwards and I'm like ah yeah Uh, but when it comes to making body butters or making blends or making whatever like it is it's not something that I typically go for at all because I want something that is I'll say richer but just more has the I'm looking for different qualities in the the body elements of the yeah natural absolutely So do you have a favorite response when people do say that, you know, carrot oils don't matter or, you know, you can just use whatever oil you want? <laughs> what, what goes through oh, your head? Or just what use goes- the carrier oil, right? Okay. I have 160 here. Which one do you want? Right. And that's, and I know it's, it's something that unfortunately the people just don't think about enough and so even when you say 160 like that just blows my mind because I know there are a lot obviously I know there's a lot when you just look at the plants you you see yeah. how many plants yeah. there are um there's going to be a whole I've lot of different worthy of the of pressing yeah right. yeah exactly yeah. um do you have one that like when someone is me macerating oils infusing oils different things like that does that make more of a difference because again I know each one will have depending on what you're looking for in the base um what those benefits you want but is there some that you might want to look more towards infusing with or for less infusing? infusing you know olive is the kind of the standard it's been used since the Romans right or yeah the, maybe even um Olive's okay. I, when I was making products, I wanted, I started making a, a facial line and the olive was too oily feeling for me. Mm. And so I somehow got on the idea of sesame, not to okay. And test the sesame really worked. It wasn't, it was lighter and it held up well. And then, so years later, when I understand the fatty acids and I look at the profile, it has a good measure of polyunsaturated, but it has enough natural, um, I think there are uh, polyphenols in there, in the unsaponifiable that keep it, um, give it a really long shelf life. So some of that small part that I was talking about, that can bring a lot of stability to some oils. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um you know, like flax, they'll go off fast and rosehip and a few, but others will, you know, can, can last longer because of um, other parts. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. That, that's, no. kind of go that's great. 
And uh, yeah, I've actually, I've used um, sesame oil when I do a few of my infusions. I've kind of, and often it depends on kind of what I have on hand too sometimes. Yeah. Um, but that makes me think as to one thing I did think of that I was trying to think of earlier is, now does it make a difference where you get your oils? Can you get oils from the grocery store? Does that make a difference? Because a lot of people have, depending on where they are in the in the world also, because yeah. like I know we have students worldwide, but some of them have a hard time finding certain oils. Now, some whereas some of them, like you can find olive oil in a grocery store, sesame oil, almond oil. Uh, even hemp oil, like there, there's so many oils now in the grocery store. Does that make a difference or do you it's, want to look perfect, somewhere else? Place. Um, the oils for cooking tend to be more refined. Mm -hmm. I mean, certain types of suppliers are going to specialize in unrefined oils for natural skincare formulators. Yeah. Um, but uh, the grocery, I, I recommend when people are starting out, go to the grocery store. If you don't like how it feels on your skin, then you can cook with it, you know. Um, That's true. <laughs> it's not wasted. <laughs> the only thing about grocery stores, one, they like um, avocado oils, usually, you know, it's a kind of a new thing at the grocery store. And they're usually very, have no color at all, or just a very pale yellow, but you can get very green olive oil that's unrefined. Okay. As I was gonna say, mine's always green but maybe because I get the organic. Um, yeah, maybe um, like Costco. I sometimes, yeah. um, they have great big bottles of avocado oil and that's has no color essentially. Oh, okay, okay. Very refined, which is, yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. And it could be a good base. It could be a good massage base because it's high in oleic acid, which is mono. And, yeah. um, but the only thing about grocery store is like read your labels because toasted, Lots of oils are toasted for flavor, like the sesame, you know, like the for Asian yeah. cooking. But I've seen almond and pumpkin toasted and walnut toasted. So go ahead. So just make sure it's not toasted. Okay. Uh, and so what would toasting, would that well, change the compound of it? I would assume. Not really, but or... it's it makes it smell. I mean, you're going to smell okay. like food. That's true. And it's going to compete with this. If you're an aromatherapist, it's going to compete with your scent. You don't, I don't know. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. If you want to, I mean, there's no reason with trying, if you want to feel fit sesame oil, you can try a little toasted for the feel, yeah. but um, I wouldn't yeah. want to wear it. <laughs> you don't want to smell like sesame all day long necessarily because the aroma is more there. I can dim some or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little treat for later. It's all good. Yeah. So no, that is great. Um, they're, they're different. You're going to find different things. It's just read labels really carefully and yeah. so you know what you're getting. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's great. Thank you. So before we end, do you have any last recommendations or things to look for or wisdom to share? Just kind of any last words? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, there are lots of carrier oils. And so uh, you don't need to say just use the carrier oil or they're all the same. Um, mm -hmm. That I kind of make a joke of that in some of the beginning of some of my courses. So if you thought that, <laughs> you won't by the end. <laughs> no, explore all the possibilities and all blend them together. You don't need to just use one either. Yeah, That's yeah. If one is too heavy, then bring a lighter one in and, and mix right. them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great. And so if someone wants to connect with you, uh, you know, you've talked about your membership, you've talked about your a uh, couple courses, where can people find what courses you're offering? Where can people find your amazing book or just get in touch with you wherever you are, if you want to share those places and we'll have them in the show notes also, but if okay. just, um, well, the book in, can be found on Amazon. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty, and I think, I think there's a Kindle version, um, but then also um, lipidoils.com is, and in there, um, my daughter's my partner, and she's done a, a wonderful job. We have blog posts in there. We have um, uh, kind of a description of the courses and the membership, and just kind of general information about lipid oils. And then when we have courses, she'll put a banner up for whatever is opening uh, soon. 
So okay. it's just a lot. That's really uh, the place to go. I do have also a website, susanmparker.com, but we're kind of moving away from that to kind of bring her in. Okay, great. <laughs> it's about mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're on social media too, aren't you? Yep. Um, okay. Oh, uh, our the Facebook group, uh, Lipid Love. Yeah. And in there, um, you have to answer a couple of questions and we ask you not to discuss essential oils because they are covered so brilliantly elsewhere. They and this are. is the only place uh, where it's only lipid oil. So that's the only. Um, no, that's great. Yes. And then, and there's lots of comments in there. 9,000 people now. So nice. Um, awesome. And then yeah. you're on, are you on Instagram also? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's lipid oils or susanmparker.com. All right, we'll find it. And I know, I think we've got yeah. it. If we, okay. right. and there's we'll a put... YouTube channel. I, okay. think, I think all the little, uh, you know, the little icons oh. are in yeah. the lipidoils.com. Okay. So. And we'll look, we'll look it all up. I know you put a few um, when we were contacting back and forth, but we'll make sure that we have all of them too uh, in the show notes so people can find you wherever they're looking. So. Yes, it come if you know your essential oils, now you have a new project. Come on. Right, on. and it's they're <laughs> crucially important as an aromatherapist. You yeah. need to know carrier oils for safety, which is what we are always stressing about is being a safe aromatherapist, informed aromatherapist, and you can't do that without having proper carrier oils, without having proper lipid oils, fatty oils. Right. So, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Veta Revives, the essential oil scoop. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Nice to meet you. This episode was brought to you by Essentria, a leading online aromatherapy school. You can join the free introduction to essential oil course at www.schoolofessentria.com. If you love this episode or you got a lot of value out of it, please make sure you share it with someone in your community who you think will enjoy it too. If you haven't already subscribed or reviewed the show yet, please go over to your preferred streaming platform and hit subscribe, then leave a review. This is the best way to help support us and we appreciate it. Email us with a screenshot of your review and you will be entered into our monthly draw for a free mini course. This podcast is for information purposes only. We are certified clinical aromatherapists and holistic health professionals. If you have a medication concern, please refer to your health team. Everyone's health is unique to themselves, so the topics and suggestions stated may or may not apply to you directly.